As the world watches Ukraine, there is one thought that is on the mind of many. Is Taiwan next? Here is Michael McFaul, the former U.S. ambassador to Russia, who states, If the U.S. pulls back on our support from Ukraine now, we radically diminish our credibility to deter a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. Is the former ambassador's assessment correct, or is the United States making another foreign policy error in taking the first steps into provoking China into our next military conflict? It might sound extreme, but even some of the most well-respected scholars in the world, someone like Kishmore Mapubani, the former president of the UN Security Council, is worried about the future. Uh, Taiwan can be the next Ukraine, and I think it's important for every Taiwanese to realize that unless the Taiwanese people are very, very careful. They'll be dragged into a war that they do not want. One of the greatest geopolitical questions of the 21st century is what will China do with Taiwan? In reality, there are only three options. The first is China will continue with the status quo and wait for Taiwan. The Chinese government has already patiently waited for over 70 years, so there is a proven track record that implies this is a likely scenario. The second option is China will successfully convince Taiwan to reunify with the mainland. While this scenario is certainly more difficult for China to achieve, we can't underestimate how Taiwan's trade with China is far bigger than its trade with the United States. Mainland China and Hong Kong accounts for 42% of Taiwan's exports, while the U.S. only has a 15% share. In addition, many large Taiwanese companies in high-tech industries, such as the world's biggest chipmaker, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, operate factories in mainland China. So once again, we can't rule out this scenario either. But here is where things get scary, because the third and final option is downright scary, mainly because it's quickly becoming the most likely option to occur. The third option is the United States and China will find themselves in an intense geopolitical battle that erupts into a hot war. Here is American billionaire investor Ray Dalio, who admits we are sitting at a dangerous point in history. The Taiwan issue, it's an irreconcilable issue, uh, and so on. It's right at the line. The, the breaking point is if the United States said, we are in favor of the independence of Taiwan, that's the equivalent of a declaration of war. Ray Dalio knows many of the U.S. politicians are pushing the idea of the U.S. government to move away from the One China policy and promote Taiwanese independence. Dalio goes on to state, All things considered, I think that the greater provocations will most likely come from the American side, which I worry will cause a tit-for-tat crossing of the line. All of us have seen what's happening to Ukraine. The country has been destroyed and the conflict will continue for many years to come. While there was a chance to save Ukraine with smart diplomacy before, that time has passed and Ukraine's future looks incredibly dim. Look at what's happening between Israel and Palestine in the last few days. It looks like our world is quickly moving towards World War III. Taiwan, however, represents something entirely different. 90% of the world's most advanced microchips are produced in Taiwan, and if the US and China go to war, this would create a global setback and economic destruction unlike any event we've ever seen before. But what are the exact steps both Taiwan and the United States must take now to avoid a future war with China? Let's first establish the fundamental difference between Ukraine and Taiwan. The conflict in Ukraine escalated during the 2008 Bucharest summit, when NATO allies announced Ukraine will become a member of NATO, and Russia responding that Ukraine joining NATO was a red line for their national security. NATO expansion has always been a controversial issue that had the potential for war, and it's why George Kennan, one of America's most respected and accomplished experts on Russia called the expansion of NATO into Central Europe the most fateful error of American policy in the entire post-Cold War era. While both Russia and Ukraine have suffered devastating casualties with no end in sight, many are finally realizing that a neutral Ukraine could have avoided this devastating war, and in fact, it might be the only option for Ukraine's survival. But unlike Russia, China doesn't have much in the way of territorial ambitions beyond reincorporating Taiwan at some point in the future and also settling disputes over parts of its border and the seas that surround it. When asked why Taiwan is at a potential risk in the future, former UN Security President Kishmore Mapubani states, And the reason why that might happen is that there are lots of falsehoods traveling in the world. This is a profound insight. Kishmore points to falsehoods or lies about China and the situation over Taiwan as the main reason why Taiwan is in a dangerous position today. 
The reason for this is that the United States and our foreign policy experts are pushing the narrative that China will strike Taiwan at any minute. Just listen to former Pentagon staff member Elbridge Colby's message to fellow Americans. Xi Jinping is definitely a realist, and he is preparing for a large-scale military assault against the island, and it will be surprising because if they do it, they don't want to give us warning. So you have to be prepared and we have to be prepared. Colby is conditioning Americans into believing the U.S. government has no other option but to increase our military spending, increase our military presence in the Asia-Pacific region, and go to war with China. But Colby's insights reveal he has a very limited knowledge of China-Taiwan relations. There is a country with 1.4 billion people that is run by a ruthless communist dictator, dictator who has a death wish for you. And you're telling me that we should prioritize Ukraine? It's absolutely absurd to say that China has a death wish for Taiwan. Americans like Colby are so far removed from the simple truth that all 1.4 billion Chinese citizens look at Taiwanese people as their brothers and sisters and want nothing more than to reunify one day. It serves China no benefit to go in and slaughter the people of Taiwan. Seriously, what would that actually accomplish for China? But this is exactly what Kishmore Mapubani is referring to, falsehoods and complete lies surrounding China and Taiwan. In reality, China's government just revealed a new economic development plan between the mainland and Taiwan in hopes to boost Taiwan's access to the mainland. Beijing wants to turn the Fujian province into a zone for economic development with Taiwan. The proposal would see the development of gas, electricity, and transportation links, as well as giving Taiwanese companies preferred access to mainland China for increased business opportunities. But China hawks like Kyle Bass, who regularly makes appearances on CNBC as a China expert, instead tells the American people Beijing will attack Taiwan by 2024 and bring war to the West. Now you might be thinking to yourself, hold on Cyrus, what about China's role in the rising tensions? If China really wanted peace, why does the People's Liberation Army routinely fly into Taiwanese airspace? Why did Xi Jinping give a speech proclaiming that China will never renounce the right to use force? And why did China just release a new map claiming Taiwan and other parts of the South China Sea as its rightful territory. These are all excellent questions to ask, and they are even easier to answer. Let's start with the controversial map the Chinese government released last month. This map features 10 dashes, and upon its release, American politicians and China hawks collectively lost their minds. They call China aggressive, expansionist, and evil, but there is a small detail that you most likely have never heard. And that is that every other country in the region is doing the exact same thing. Of course, Western media will never tell you about Vietnam, Malaysia, and the Philippines making territorial claims in the South China Sea. Of course, it's only China that is the big aggressor in this scenario. But do you want to know what the most fascinating point about this entire map is? The fact that Taiwan itself has an 11 dash line and claims even more of the South China Sea than mainland China. Once again, don't forget the wise words of Kishmore Bahubani. Falsehoods is the main reason why people today don't understand the China-Taiwan relationship. Remember the tweet I opened today's video with? The former U.S. Ambassador Michael McFaul stated, If the U.S. pulls back our support from Ukraine now, we radically diminish our credibility to deter a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. I would actually argue the opposite. With our failed wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the United States has taught the world that a loss or a pullback will not make the military industrial complex reconsider America's next war. More U.S. military presence in the Taiwan Strait does not deter China's military action. In reality, it increases the chance of China actually using it. This is the current security dilemma that Taiwan faces. The more the U.S. strengthens its military in the region, the more Beijing will counter. It's a never-ending cycle and why tensions continue to increase over time. But here is French geopolitical analyst Anwar Bertrand, who shares the truth you probably have never heard of. The dirty little secret is that the very best way to 100% guarantee there won't be a use of force is if the U.S. were to unequivocally state they will not under any circumstances help Taiwan. This will force the Taiwanese government to immediately find a political settlement with Beijing instead of believing they don't have to because the U.S. has their back. Strangely, this option is never discussed. Is Taiwan going to be the next Ukraine? Or can we save its future and the future of our globe by taking a step back and observing Ukraine and learn how to make a smart diplomatic decision? Everyone, that was the news portion of today's video. But now I want to turn you to the investing portion and let you know about AFA Energy, who is the sponsor of today's video. 
Check out this article from The Economist revealing why uranium prices are so high conflicts and resurgent demand. As I've outlined in today's video, global conflicts around the world aren't stopping in the future. And in fact, they are only going to put a huge squeeze on several important resources for our world. Every single week as I'm analyzing geopolitical conflicts, I'm always looking for opportunities in the market. Just check out this interesting fact. As much as the United States wants to chokehold Russia and support Ukraine, we simply can't. Because even today, some 18 months after Russia's invasion into Ukraine, the United States is still actively buying uranium from Russia to supply America's nuclear power plants. But here is where the opportunity for Atha Energy exists. The US is desperately seeking to reduce its dependence on Russian uranium, and Atha Energy could be the company to help them do exactly this. The ticker for Atha Energy is SASKF, and let me break down a few reasons why I think this company has an enormous potential in the future. Number one, the United States is in a massive need for uranium. The US is the largest consumer of civilian uranium, and around 60 million people in the United States gets their energy and power from nuclear sources. Simply put, if the US doesn't have access to uranium, one fifth of the country can't function. Here is Elon Musk earlier this year tweeting the world should use more nuclear power. Meanwhile, Microsoft just announced it is hiring a nuclear energy expert to help power its AI and cloud data centers. Number two, uranium is in an incredible bull market. The bottom of the market was just after Trump's election in 2016, and since then, uranium has quadrupled in price. Earlier this year, Pew Research found that support for nuclear energy is growing throughout America, and one of the rare things that both Republicans and Democrat voters can agree on. Okay, so we've established the need for uranium and that the market is ready. Now let's specifically talk about AFA Energy and why this is such a unique opportunity. AFA Energy is the largest landowner and the world's most important uranium region, the Athabasca Basin in Canada. This region in Canada is home to the highest grade uranium in the entire planet, and Atha Energy has been slowly acquiring land in the region for the past 20 years. In fact, Atha Energy now holds more than 3.4 million acres of land, more than double that of its nearest competitor, while also maintaining $33 million in cash, again, almost double that of its nearest competitor. Now, the value per acre is actually the cheapest, at only $31, but that's because Atha Energy hasn't even started drilling yet. So there is an enormous potential for the future of this company as it begins its drilling phase. And this is exactly when you want to start entering in these mining stocks, before or they make their first discoveries. Now, two of AFA's largest energy shareholders are Matthew Mason and Timothy Young, two prospectors who have worked with several other successful mining companies in the region and have experienced a tremendous amount of success in this exact region for the past 10 years. As a result, AFA Energy currently owns a 10% carried interest in NextGen Energy and also a 10% carried interest in ISO Energy. So investing in AFA Energy is in a sense similar to an ETF fund, giving you more exposure to multiple quality companies and the most important uranium jurisdiction in the world. Once again, I can't stress how important uranium is to the future of our world, especially as more instability, more chaos, and unfortunately, more wars is likely in the future. The United States needs to find a reliable source of uranium to power the nuclear power plants that supply 20% of America's electricity. And I think Atha Energy has a great opportunity to serve this exact interest. But once again, before you do any investing, I want you to make sure that you do your own due diligence. And to help you with that, I'm going to include the website, stock ticker, and the investor presentation deck down in the description so that you can do your own research. Everyone, as always, I want to thank you for your continued support. And I look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.